This delightfully fun to make jack-o'-lantern Halloween cake is the perfect spooky holiday Halloween treat for the Halloween season. Hey guys, I'm Nick and today I'm going to show you how to make a really cool jack-o'-lantern cake. It's basically made out of two bundt cakes, really delicious chocolate cake, put together with some easy buttercream decorations. Let's get started. Begin by adding the flour, sugar, bicarb soda, salt and cocoa powder to the bowl of a, well, I'm using my stand mixer. Now, this recipe is basically my chocolate bun cake recipe, but doubled. If you don't have a bowl large enough to make this in one go, then I would highly recommend making it in two goes. You're going to be using a bunt pan, and if you only have one like I do, and you're not you know, just bunt pan rich, then you're going to be baking this one cake at a time anyway. Once you've mixed these ingredients together, you are going to add your butter, which is softened a little bit at a time. Now, unfortunately, the camera wasn't recording when I added the eggs. So I've added the eggs in there and now I'm adding the milk slowly. Once you do add those wet ingredients, the butter just kind of goes down a little bit in terms of like volume, so it's not going to be as messy if you're making it in one go. Now, I'm using a large bunt pan. If you want the measurements, grab it on the written recipe on the website. Here's an easy hack on how to stop your bunt cake from sticking to the pan. If you've ever made this before unsuccessfully, I'm about to show you a really cool trick. So you're going to brush this with butter. Then you're going to dust it with cocoa powder really, really well. So this is a chocolate cake that cocoa powder is not going to show. If you're making a vanilla bun, you can just dust it with a little bit of flour, not too much. Pour half the butter in there, spread it around evenly, and we're going to bake this for about 45 to 50 minutes. Then let it cool down. Now, today I'm going to be using my fluffy American buttercream frosting. The recipe for that is on the scranline.com. I'm going to color it with some orange. I know it looks like I added a lot. I did. I want it to be really, really orange. So I'm using food gel. Don't use liquid food coloring. Once you've colored your frosting, the bunt cake is ready to take out. And look how perfect it looks. Let it cool down completely and then use a serrated knife to carefully trim off the tops. You want them to be nice and flat. And so you've got the two, this is how they're going to sit together. And I actually added a little bit more batter into one than the other, which is why they're different sizes. Now I've got a 10 inch cake board. You can grab these at cake decorating stores or you can just use a serving plate. Add a little bit of frosting on top and stick your first layer on top. Then add some more frosting. Spread it around and add your second layer on top. And basically we're going to crumb coat this. So adding a thin layer of frosting around the sides, scrape it off and it's just basically going to get all of those crumbs trapped into the first layer of frosting so that your second layer of frosting looks nice and neat and crumbless. Once this is chilled, you're going to frost it with another layer of that orange frosting. Now you might notice this frosting looks a little bit different because I decided to make Swiss meringue buttercream frosting for the outside because it looks smoother and shinier. You can use American buttercream frosting, it's really up to you. This is the fun part. So once you've got it looking like a pumpkin shape and I'm, I use an offset spatula to just kind of shape it around. And by the way, using a cake turntable in a recipe like this comes in really handy. So I'm using a little fondant tool, but you can use a toothpick to just carve out where I want the face to be. And the beauty about doing this first is that if you make a mistake, you can just go over it with a spatula and smooth it out again. And again, this cake doesn't have to look perfect. It is just like a pumpkin cake. So a little bit of roughness is okay. So we're going to be carving out the details because something that really annoys me about <laughs> Jack and Lantern cakes is that the details look like they're raised on top of the frosting. Sometimes people make them out of fondant, which is fine. But I wanted to do a little bit of carving to make it look like the actual mouth has teeth. I don't know what it is about my brain, but when I looked at the mouth of all of these cakes, I just see this weird shaped mouth. I want the teeth in the mouth to actually look like teeth. So we're going to do a raised or indented mouth effect. So carve away 
very slowly and take your time that frosting and we're going to be doing the nose and the eyes as well and then fill it in with some black frosting now if you want to get really super black frosting I've got the instructions over on my website on how to achieve that so once you've got the face done the next thing we're going to do is the stalk and I'm using chocolate buttercream frosting for that then just kind of smooth it out with a spatula I found this mini spatula I don't even know where it came from it's the loyal brand one and it was perfect for this but you could just use a knife you don't need these fancy tools to actually make this cake you can use regular kitchen tools now using a small piping tip and a leaf tip i'm going to pipe the vines on top and i'm going to do the leaves as he said you don't need fancy tools but that's it that's my jack o lantern cake it's super fun imagine this on your halloween table when you're having a halloween party and you actually get to carve a pumpkin this cake is delicious it's chocolate of course so it is delicious the recipe is on thisgrandline.com so grab it over there Hope you guys have a great day. I have another really cool Halloween recipe coming up next week. But if you're looking for really great Halloween recipe ideas, there's loads on the scranline.com. So go check them out there. Have a great day. I'll see you all on the next episode of the Scranline.